We're rounding Cape Londonderry now and... At 8.6 knots there! At 8.6 knots! So we're at the northernmost tip of, or the northernmost point of Western Australia. We can see a little bit of island there. If I, want to be, if I want to be a complete nerd about it, I would say that it would be the northernmost tip of mainland Western Australia. Oh, well, yeah, mainland. Yeah. What's happening? Yeah. Oh, it slowed down. <laughs> oh, there we go. This is the Cape London Dairy Glass Out. This is right at the point where we're meeting uh, the water coming out of another well, the Bonaparte Gulf. So we've just slowed down to four knots. So we've got an opposing tide meeting the tide that we were just roaring in at nine knots. <laughs> okay. This is in no wind. This place is just shocking in like 25 knots. Dangerous seas. Surfing our way in. A meter under the keel. Whoa, 90 centimeters under the keel. 1.7 meters. We are in blue water. <laughs> 1.8 When we were going across that outer sandbar, how low did it get? Uh, 0.9 But where we turned around, it was zero <laughs> Well, yeah, as the swells were coming we <laughs> That's why this boat spins well on its axis, doesn't it? So you can reverse forward, reverse forward Gone I think we've had enough practice with, uh, with just, just touching sandbars and just driving out of it. Mm. It's just routine now. <laughs> <laughs> just put down the anchor in our new home at Glycosmos Bay and it's really pretty we can hear the birds put a trip line down as you've seen in the footage just in case uh, the anchor gets snagged on some sort of rock that we can't, couldn't see on the sounder and uh, it was a bit hair raising coming through all the different sandbars but we've made it good work skipper hmm. we're in we're in so Really undulating bottom here, which is why I put pinky on. Mm. There's lots of fish return on the bottom. Mm. So maybe we should... Um, Get some gold bands, maybe. <laughs> there could be gold bands down there. We've got, that, um, we've got those, those queenie baits that we can throw down, certainly. Mm. So We've used the minimum chain here. We're not expecting... There's no swell and there's, well, we won't have to put up with any wind chop or anything in here, mm -hmm. so... We've gone just a shade under four to one scope here, so. Backy. Back in here, bat. <laughs> Down in that cave. That smells like that too. <laughs> We've got Pascal there pioneering a route through. We've had to climb up a, uh, a scree slope to, to make it, but uh, it looks like we're nearing the top. It was a little bit sketchy, some of the stuff was a bit loose, but it wasn't too bad to climb. Yeah. 
to the yacht all the way down there and coming in that's what we were looking out for so we're just coming around this, the sandbars there you can see they stretch around the corner there's one right in the middle that is a mighty boab <laughs> So this is what the stream above the falls has been reduced to. Because we've been travelling a while, we've got, we've got to this part of the world in late dry season, and it is dry. Mm. A little bit more suspicious of this water. Um, not only is it still, but I've also seen cow tracks, and so that raises the possibility of giardia. I still don't think it's super likely, but um, the last thing we want out here is an upset stomach, or worse. So. We let it lie. Good thing we've got heaps of water on the boat. There's this little billabong that's about half capacity. Bit of slime and scunge on the surface, so that doesn't make it particularly inviting. Um, and the guide that we've had a look at for this area just says, not guaranteed to be free of crocodiles. I'd be pretty sus if there was a croc in here. <laughs> but what would it be living off? Oh, I suppose if wallabies came up. <laughs> wallabies and cows. Yeah. They only need three meals a, a year. So, remember crocodile safety, get your girlfriend to go for a swim first, but Pascal doesn't like the scum on the water, so I'm out of luck on this one. What's for dinner? Oh, the old cod. He ran out of luck, didn't he? Poor old cod. Poor old cod. It's a good sized cod. Well, yeah. Good size for us. Yeah. For head. eating. Look at that. Look at that mouth. Yeah, the head. Yeah. Cosmos Bay and we're going to go to a place called the Lost City. It can't be that lost because, well it has a name, the Lost City. Um, we know about this place because we do, we did get a bit of information before we went into the Kimberleys. One was this really great book by the Fremantle Sailing Club um, and that's West Australian Cruising. So this is a really great guide and the other thing that we did was joined the Kimberley Coast Cruising Yacht Club um, and they put out some really great information as well. We use that information sparingly, but we do use it. Um, and why I say that, it says Glycosmus Bay, catamarans only. And it also said that for the Drysdale River. We're not a catamaran, um, and we still came in here. But for things like the Lost City and, and things like that, they, it's really been invaluable. Um, they are the popular parts of the Kimberley. Tour boats go there, other yachties go there, so they're well known. Um, but if we hadn't got these resources, we wouldn't have known about it. Um, you do talk to other yachties, but here in the Kimberleys, it's really remote. You just don't get to meet many people. So it's limited the amount of information you can swap and exchange. So if you are cruising the Kimberleys, which you should, because it's awesome, um, the West Australian Cruising Guide by the Fremantle Sailing Club, and it really is worth just slinging a bit of money to the Kimberley Coast Cruising Yacht Club um, and their PDFs that they produced. There's not a lot of them, and it is just the northern part of the Kimberley, but um, it's, it's information that, that you, you can really use or ignore. It's up to you.
and it depends on the boat and your comfort with it. But anyway, that's an upper ramble. We're going to the Lost City, so come on with us and have a look. You know, you've come to a popular spot when there's <laughs> an arch and a bit of track. Yeah. So as much as we like to get around barefoot, this just doesn't seem like it. Spinifex country. Spinifex, sharp rocks. I've got a little burn eating away at the middle of my foot, so I'm, I'm in my boots. So, so it doesn't need to be fancy, but it does Basically need to be. the end of my shoes, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. After this trip, they're getting the boot. Oh, I see what you did there, getting the boot. It's really hard to say like whether all of this is interrelated because you've got these figures here are they on looking mm. this person here we don't know whether it's a woman or a man holding out this figure upside down is this guy a part of it you know has he come along he's got his stick there mm. this looks like a figure upside down uh, your arms he's got a little bracelet there that you can you can see the adornments i don't know what this is down here is it a loincloth or is he a bit of a well-hung dude <laughs> but um yeah this whatever this is looks like it's coming in for a bit of a beating there and then you've got this later stuff big fat yeah affected by weathering um bacteria lichens all sorts of stuff and you've got even other later stuff this is yellow mm. ochre but it's just not as well preserved as these guillon guillon this technique they had of making that pigment it really lasted a long time whereas this is sort of faded Gone the way of all, all flesh. Little numbaddy thing. A rat. Or a crocodile. Actually, I think it's a crocodile. Look. Nose, eyes. Uh, follow the same. Look at the stripes. Ah. Tasmanian tiger. Yeah, right. What do you reckon? Yeah. But this looks like there's an out, there's a red outline. Yeah. And then it's been followed in. Yeah. Anyone that's, anyone that's sort of with us on this and they don't know what a thylacine is, um, that's what it is, a Tassie tiger, an extinct animal uh, well, all through Australia. But they're finding evidence with Aboriginal art that they may have um, roamed the whole continent at one stage. And then as people came over the land bridge, um, human pressure, even before white people came here, human pressure uh, drove quite a few animals extinct, all the megafauna. Um, but yeah, so... An interesting bit of conjecture on our part, I suppose. If anyone can clear that up, that would be awesome. So in addition to just, just normally looking for art as we would, um, because we know that this is frequented by um, tourist operators in helicopters um, and expedition boats, we've been human tracking as much as anything else. Like mm. Looking for paths, um, old footprints, stuff like that, broken vegetation. So we're sort of using our tracking skills. I guess tracking tourists isn't that hard though, is it? You know, sort of just bumbling through the bush and have some stuff off. So. Well, if, you, if you're in the, uh, the real estate market at the moment, you'll find that housing is very expensive, but these caves have everything to offer. We've got split level living. This one's got a, uh, an oven built into it. 
We've got wasp nests here guaranteeing it's nice and dry in the wet season. So come on down <laughs> to Kimberley Real Estate. What have you found in there? Well this cave doesn't have a lot of art, it looks like it looks like a turtle on the roof. It does have a lot of shells all over the ground here. And a variety of shells and they're all sort of been opened up. They haven't been deposited here by any sort of tide in the last couple of thousand years. But this cave's got like an open sort of living area with a view and a breeze. But also further back there's a really nice sleeping platform back there as well. So this is a this is a particularly nice shelter. This one you've got some ocean glimpses. And if there was quite a few people here at any one time, you'd probably be able to see the comings and goings of other people, your children, whatever else. It's quite a nice little spot. You've got a, you've got a good seat just here. So I could easily imagine just yeah, you know, making stuff here, making some nets or string or whatever, looking out. So do you think about a bit of theorising, Pascal, that this might have housed a, an art critic? Because a lot of this looks like it's been painted, but in, in broad sweeps, and looks like they might have obliterated previous things that might, they might have found offensive while they lived here. Mm. On the walls, this is paint, 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 but it's in these broad strokes here. It's all the same. It looks like someone's just, I don't want that in my house. Look at that, that's a massive area. Mm. Trees, cave. Big slab, isn't it, like in uh, Swift Bay? Mm. There's, there's more though that a good shelter over there, but that's the one that can fit a bunch of people, so mm. it's gonna be a good gathering spot. Yeah, well, that cave's delivered on its promise. There's a group of people, corroboree or running, dancing. Lots of small pieces. Mm. So this, this might have been a really uh, good storytelling rock, having a bit of a chat to people, talking a bit of history. This is a great cave. There's some in here that look like they could just be a couple of weeks old. Like <laughs> they are really, really well preserved up here. He's legging it too, isn't he? Yeah. He's got those great thigh muscles. Well, that's another person legging it too. Yeah. I think they're a set. Looks like the same artist anyway. Don't you reckon? Hard to say. Hard to but say. they're the same colour and they're the same style. But like you say before, that other one is going orange, whereas that one's still that deep maroon. It looks fresh. It's this is a really great cave because you're getting that you're getting that prevailing wind, and over the years that would have stayed much the same because you get that sea breeze. So this really collects it, and you can still sit in the shade. So it's really really great. What we haven't found yet is a source of water around here. Mm. I'm just looking at this corroboree piece, it's really cool. Oh, I found the kangaroo here. <laughs> Big one. Yeah. amazing cave it's really nice and cool lots of space for lots of people to gather in and loads of bits of pieces of art here so the roof the walls everything huh yeah lots of animals which is interesting and there's this one here which has got um, yellow ochre and dark red and white so it's colored which is really unique 
I, these creatures look really cool, but I don't know what they are. Maybe flying possums or something? I don't know. Well, you could be forgiven for thinking that this brachychiton tree is Karajong's dead, but look here. New buds. So, dead fleas don't, dead trees don't flower. You can see the old pods here. When these are fresh and they open, each one of those is a little seed that tastes a little bit like, I don't know, between peanuts and popcorn. But they're filled with irritating hair, so you've got to just throw them on a low fire, burn it all out, pop the seeds out, and then you can eat it. So it's pretty reasonable bush tucker. There's just nothing left in here at the moment. Mm. There you go. I would have sworn that that tree's dead, but what do I know? There's some, um, there's some new pods starting to grow, actually. Yep. So some good tucker on the way. So here's a bush, and it looks like it's covered in tiny mandarins. But uh, if we remember what they say about plant foods, green or blue, it could be good for you. Red or yellow, you'll be a dead fellow. And these are incredibly bitter. So yep, they'll probably have some cyanic acid or something nasty in there. But most Australian plants, they haven't, they haven't really um, evolved in tandem with monkeys or bears or anything like that, omnivores. So... They're pretty resistant to being useful to, to us people. <laughs> and, uh, most of them are pretty toxic. So yeah, this one looks good. Kill you dead. Here's evidence of water in the wet. It's an old waterway. Got all these dead shrubs around it that grow in the mud. Fresh water. You saw a runoff further. That's mud. So that figure's still clear, but one, two, three, four, five. The other one's yeah. starting to fade, aren't they? So, mm -hmm. Oh, there's another one over there. Mm -hmm. So that one doesn't look like it's holding boomerangs, huh? It looks like it's got a dilly bag. Tribal female, who knows. Just everywhere you look, just great shelters. In times of, in the wet season, in times of cyclones or hurricanes, whatever you want to call them, this just would have been a perfect refuge. Just everywhere you look. A couple of Bradshaws there. Yeah, there's like two people facing each other or something. With their headpieces. Yeah. Oh, whoa. Come and have a look at this. So, three people. Well, no, sorry, two people. And a wallaby. And a wallaby with a wasp nest over the top of it. So, what do you make of that? Like, we can see the wallaby there, but mm. it looks like the guy might be. So, this, this one closest to me looks like he's ready to head out, and the other one looks like he's chilling out with his wallaby. Yeah, it looks like he might have speared the wallaby, because he hasn't got his spear in his hand. Yeah, maybe that's, that's a rendition of a successful hunt. Yeah. So, he's got two spears. Yep. Multiple boomerangs. Yep. And maybe one of those is supposed to be a spear thrower as well, because there's another little bit in there. Mmm, it's really detailed. It's really cool. Mm. But this one's not ornamented like the other Bradshaw, so he's not ceremonial, huh? He's one yeah. He's just, just stock standard, ready to go out, rather than yep. dressed up in all his finery. That's it, the Lost City at Glycosmos Bay. Uh, Pascal? It's been really amazing. It's been a treasure hunt, trying to find all the pieces of art, and we found some really nice pieces that haven't been weather affected at all, which was really exciting to see. Like we haven't really seen that yet. So. No, that's right. That's some of uh, some of the stuff we've seen here is probably the best that we've seen. Yeah. Um, we've seen a lot of pieces. If you've watched the videos, then you would have seen a lot of the stuff that we did see. But some of it has been really great here. Mm. Um, can you hear that sound? Mm, we're uh, right at the beach where we. Oh well, I don't see the beach where we've put the dinghy, but it must be near. Well, that's one of them. But you know that low rumbling? That's my stomach. So oh. we're going to go and have some lunch and eat some of the fish that I caught earlier. What do yeah, you think? that sounds great. All right. Okay, 
So that's it for Lost City. <laughs> if you can make it here by any means. Definitely um, worth a visit. Yeah, it's really great. <laughs>